In our series, we're discussing how you can get sharp with the pursuit of your purpose, especially in a world where we are so gifted and so talented in more than one discipline. And there are very many options that we can be able to pursue. And in addition to that, there is a lot of ideas that are coming in our hearts and in our minds. And if we put those ideas together, it's also possible to pursue them. In other words, these are valid things that you and I can be able to follow through. The question is, how do we get sharp and how do we get on point in our purpose pursuit? And the answer we've said is to be minimalist in our approach, especially with all these myriads of options available to us. We become minimalist. And I'm just discussing in these episodes, how exactly do you pull it off when you become minimalist? And that's what I want to discuss in this episode today. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Life Signatures Podcast with Lawrence Namale. Lawrence is a life coach, author, and keynote speaker who loves to tackle different topics on purpose, productivity, and resilience. His mission in life is to awaken all your boundless possibilities available in you. Life Signatures Podcast is dedicated to bring to reality every single person who knows that deep down in their gut, there's got to be more to life than this. And now, here is your host, Lawrence Namale. start by doing a recap here even as we talk about this minimalist approach to productivity and to purpose pursuit we've said that there's uh, an opportunity for us to do quite a number of things we can do this we can do that and they're all valid but if we do all of these things if we seek to do all of these things we will not have enough time you do not have 200 years to be alive to do all that you want to do you have limited time that's the that's the guiding principle we need to have. You ha- you and I have so much limited time to work with. And even though we can do very many things, even though we are gifted in this and we are gifted in that, even though we have ideas upon ideas, we cannot do all of them at once. And therefore, if we seek to do all of them at once, we become paralyzed. And the answer here is simply to become minimalist. And how do we do this? Number one, we said you need to acknowledge the fact that there is so much to be done. There is need for a lot to be done. And you acknowledge the fact that you actually spoiled for choice. You are, you have this to go, that to go, and that to go, and so on. And number two, what do you do? You take a note and record all of these things in order, and you prioritize them. In other words, you have these ideas recorded. You have these abilities, these strengths, these opportunities, all of them downloaded and recorded and enumerated with a view of one day having to go through and do them. Why are we doing this? We're doing this because at some point in time you can get paralyzed in your mind where you're thinking there's just so much to do and so little time. You're doing, you're saying that there's so much to do and little time because you have not documented all these things and have a, at least some kind of semblance of they have been captured and they're going to be attended to at some point in time. When you don't have that, you get so discouraged with little time and a lot to do, which is not necessarily the truth. But today I want us to look at one more thing you can be able to do in addition to number one, acknowledge that there is a a need for so much to be done and so little time. And number two, take time and record all that you need to be done. But then today, number three, take time and meditate on each of the things that you have written down. Take time to consider them. Take time to farm them up. Take time to put them inside of your psyche, to think about them. 
Listen, where people normally get wrong in doing this, especially in planning and in dreaming, first of all, when it comes to dreaming and visualizing, people go into planning very fast before they can think about the idea and think about the task or the project ahead. They start planning about it. They haven't even thought it through. They haven't even meditated upon it. That's the first thing that people normally do. And number two, when people go into the the planning and the visualizing and so on and so forth, they do not take time to consider all the angles. That's why we need to early on make sure that we have some time to meditate on each and of each and all every one of those things that we have written down. Remember we write down these things? And by the way, writing down it means that they will keep coming. They will keep coming, they will keep coming. I know of people, let me tell you, I know of people who have ideas that keep coming to them and what they do is that they dump the previous idea that they're working on as if it's nothing and they fall in love with the latest sensation that has come their way and they start running with this latest sensation and the problem is immediately they have run like halfway through this latest sensation guess what a new sensation comes up. They normally say the beautiful ones are not yet born and it's absolutely true. The subconscious mind is so powerful. It only needs us to feed, to feed it with some seeds to ponder on. That's where the meditation comes in. You send all these things that you've been recording, these things that you've been putting in a list, this list that you've been generating, send it to your subconscious mind. How do you send it to your subconscious mind? By considering, by meditating, by ruminating on these things for a minute. And later on, this subconscious mind is going to give us feedback on the way forward. It is actually going to work on these things. I don't know how that happens. But the subconscious mind works on this thing even when we are sleeping. And it's just coordinating and connecting and and so on. So meditation is the all-important exercise. And unlike what many people do, I prefer to give this mind something and seeds to ponder on. Meditation is not about emptying this mind. It's not about emptying your mind of things and there's nothing to think about. No, meditation is ruminating. It's thinking about these things. The Bible says, if you shall think about these things day and night, then your success shall come. So we need to have this spirit of meditation. It's an all-important exercise. And uh, it gives these seeds to the subconscious mind. The seeds are these ideas, these principles, these uh, projects, these uh, new things, these possibilities that we already have downloaded. And some people practice emptying the mind. But that's not what I'm talking about here. I prefer to practice the mind as in to give the mind something to ruminate on with these things that I've talked about. Practice focusing the mind on the ideas that have already been written down already been downloaded already recorded from inspiration practice thinking about the idea and like we've said don't be thinking about planning on what not and how it's going to be brought about how it's going to be actualized no think about the validity of the plan the validity sorry of the idea think about the health of the idea look at it from all the angles and this process solves a lot of anxiety for it makes you to settle down having known that you have considered that's the key word. You've considered these things. And even if they are not attended to, you've considered something and did not leave it, you know, just like that. That's why you are freed to even get more ideas because you know you're going to put it to put those ideas in the same trajectory. You're going to download them, record them, think about them, ruminate on these things. And therefore, guess what? You will not be thinking, oh, there is just so much to do and so little time. You know, you might not be thinking about that in such a way that you're paralyzed and you don't have direction. Right now, you have a minimalist approach. You have something that you're doing and all the other things that you can do, you meditate upon them and send them to the subconscious mind as you work on what you're supposed to be working on today. Believe me, whatever project you meditate on will start to grow and take shape of its own much later on in your psyche and in your spirit. 
This is something that we need to learn to do. You know why? Because we will always have new ideas coming to us. We will always have new things, new projects, new possibilities coming on to us. And they don't find us doing nothing. They don't find us blank. They find us, let me tell you, the guys who are doing things are the guys who are normally given ideas. The guys who are busy taking action on some things. The guys who are ruminating on things and effecting their projects and moving on with their projects. These are the guys who attract more new ideas. But this is a problem. If you have not learned to download these new ideas that are coming your mind, are coming your way, and meditate upon them and think about them long enough that they are farmed up in your psyche and they have been put in your subconscious. And perhaps the only thing that you can be able to do is to have a list and generate this list of this new possibility abilities and these new ideas and the only thing that you're doing on a daily basis maybe early in the morning or late at night when you're going to sleep is just to unleash your list and look at it just unleash your list and look at it that's it that's the meditation you just think about the ideas you think on those things you look at them and you think about them long enough so that they can stay relevant to you they can stay relevant to your psyche and in so doing they start taking shape and they start growing slowly but slowly believe me by the time you get to want to execute this this these guys you are good to go you in fact have become very sharp and the clincher is that as you are meditating and ruminating and doing nothing about these new ideas, you are actually working on something currently. Therefore, you are not, guess what? You are not distracted by the thoughts that there is so much to do on this little time. You are not abandoning what you're supposed to be doing. You become a finisher who is also considering new other projects to be able to run with. That's what you do as number three. Remember number one, what do you do? You acknowledge that there's so much to do. But then number two, you download all these things that you need to do. Number three, you meditate and think about these things, even as you keep on working and finishing what is already on your plate. You have no business taking another plate of food when you haven't finished the plate that is in your hands. And that's how we become sharp and productive in our purpose pursuit. Tomorrow, we continue even as we started winding down this. Until then, bye-bye. Thank you for listening to Life Signatures Radio. If you enjoyed today's show, subscribe to Life Signatures Radio on iTunes, Stitcher, or visit our website at lifesignatures.libsyn.com. Life Signatures Radio, fresh, clean, and inspiring.